Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a billboard advertisement in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about creating a billboard ad in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how to use a smart object to make creating a billboard super simple. We're gonna define the shape and then use layer masks to cut out these lamp posts to make it look like the ad is actually behind those lamps and in the photo. Then we're gonna go into our smart object and actually build this billboard. And as we do it, you're gonna see the smart object is going to automatically update this image. What that does is gives us a real idea of what the billboard's actually gonna look like in real life. All right, guys, this is gonna be so fun. Let's get into today's episode. So we're here in Photoshop. I've got my background layer. Now, what I wanna do, this is a great ad for Bullet Whiskey. But well, we're gonna replace it with our own product. So first thing I wanna do is create a new layer. I'm gonna grab my marquee tool here. I wanna, basically, this is like a rectangle, right? Now, right now, it's in perspective, right? It's like, it's. You, know, you can see it's like tilted sideways and everything like that, but if it were straight on, basically this is just a rectangle. So what I wanna do is create a rectangle, and then that rectangle we're going to warp into position. So my rectangle, basically, we're gonna start on the top left with my marquee tool, and I'm gonna click and drag all the way over here. Now, I'm just kind of saying like the height of my billboard. You can see the height is about this height, right? I don't wanna go over here and then pull down all the way over here because you can see that's actually not the height of the billboard. So just make sure you're staying with the height. There we go. And then we're gonna go stretch right to the right and that's going to be the shape of our billboard. So we got the height there and the width pretty good in place. Okay, now what I wanna do is fill this with white. So I'm gonna hit Shift Delete and I'm gonna fill this with white. All right, and hit okay. All right, guys, so this is the shape of the billboard. Now what we're gonna do is convert this into a smart object. And it's really important that you do this at this stage because having this as a smart object is going to allow us to really create the billboard and see how it translates in real time to this image. Okay, so to convert something to a smart object, super easy. Just right click on the layer itself and go to convert to smart object. Pretty cool, not that hard. Now, what I wanna do is I basically wanna stretch this shape. I wanna get it fitting like it's actually on the billboard, right? So I'm gonna bring my opacity down just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna hit Control or Command T, and that's gonna bring up my transform dialog. It gives us all these points here, right? Now, what I can do is just click, I'm gonna hold down Control or Command, and I'm gonna click on this point right here, and it's gonna allow me to kind of pull that down there. Now, if I continue holding on control, I can grab each one of my corners and define what this actually looks like. So in this case, I'll put this right to about there. That looks pretty good. Holding, still controlling, holding down control, clicking, dragging right over there. All right, that looks pretty good. We're gonna hit enter and we'll see. All right, we're covering a pretty good area there. Now, we're gonna bring our opacity back up to 100 and if there was nothing in front of the billboard, you'd be done. But in this case, we have a couple lamp posts in front of the billboard. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those guys out to make it seem like what your actual message is is behind the lamp posts. All right, guys, let's go ahead and cut out these lamp posts. I'm gonna use the pen tool to do that. Now, if you're like, pen tool, that's scary. Um, just click on your screen right now. We got a great episode on how to use the pen tool. You can watch that and then come right back over here. Okay, so here's how the pen tool works. It's super simple. Basically, we're just gonna lower the opacity here because I wanna be able to see what I'm actually doing, right? And with this pen tool, I'm just going to click around and define the shape of this uh, of these lampposts. So hit P for the pen tool. I'm gonna click right here, and then basically just continue clicking all the way around my lamppost. So a bunch of little clicks. Now the reason I'm using the pen tool here is because any of these points, let's say, let's say this point I don't like where it is. I can just hold down the control or the command key and I can move that around. All right, control or command, and we can move this right around. So it makes it a lot easier when I'm actually, there we go, <laughs> trying to grab that dang thing. It makes it a lot easier to edit because I don't, like, basically I'm not stuck with anything, right? I can continue going 
There we go. And even if I make a shape that's not like exactly perfect, let's say I put that right there by accident, I wanted to put it up there, just hold Control or Command and you can move that point. Now I can do that with any of these points. If I want to move this point, look, that's a wider selection and a more narrow selection. So it's a really great way of making selections. So now that I have my path there, my shape, I'm going to right click inside there. We're going to go to make a selection. I want to feather that by zero pixels. We don't need any feathering here. Hit OK. And then here on this layer, I'm just going to click my layer mask button. There we go. Now you can see what it did is it actually did the exact opposite of what we want, right? So let's click on the layer mask here. I'm going to hit Control or Command I, which is going to invert that. OK. There we go. And now we can see our layer mask. This is what the layer mask looks like, just like that, right? And it happens to be in the shape of this lamppost. So let's go ahead and see if we can do some other ones. Now I'm going to click, right now I'm clicking and dragging, which is how we create these curves with the pen tool. I'm doing a relatively uh, quick job here, you could say. There we go. Basically just trying to define those curves. Okay, now I'm gonna right click in here. We'll go to make selection. And then here on my layer mask, I'm gonna hit shift delete and we'll fill that with black because that's gonna make it invisible. Whoa, <laughs> let's make sure. All right, maybe I inverted my selection on accident. All right, we'll hit make sure to invert again. There we go. Cool, so there's that part of the lamppost. Now it comes time for this lamppost. So you can see, basically I'm just clicking a few times, right? Click wherever I need to define the exterior of this guy. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hold down the control key and move this up just a little bit, which is gonna allow me to make a nicer selection. All right, there we go. I'm gonna click and drag to make a bit of a curve there. All right. And then we're going to click and drag here to make a curve out that way. Bring it right back up here. And we're almost done. This is actually like the hardest part of the whole episode, guys, is doing what I'm doing with the pen tool. So if you're like, oh, that looks hard, um, it, <laughs> don't worry. We have that episode that's going to teach you how to use the pen tool if you're not into this. And um, that really is the hardest part. So we're just clicking around this thing, basically. So now I clicked around that. I'm going to right click in here, go to make selection. OK, it's turning that into a selection. And I'm just going to hit shift delete and we're going to fill that with black. Dang, that keeps inverting my selection. I don't know why. There we go. So we filled that with black. So now what we have is a really nice. Let's just go ahead and bring up our opacity again. We have a really nice billboard. Check that out. We have a nice billboard that's behind those couple lampposts. So this is basically everything we need in order to get our start on getting the billboard in place. All right, guys, we just did a great job creating a smart object and then transforming that smart object into space. Then we used a layer mask to go ahead and cut out these lampposts in front of it so we could actually see the billboard behind it. Now it's time to go into that smart object and create our billboard, which is going to be automatically updated on this main image. All right, guys, here's the cool part. So we're in our image. You can see this is our background layer. This is just a smart object, right, that we created with a layer mask. Now, if I want to edit what's in the smart object, in this case, I'm going to edit the actual billboard itself. All I have to do is double click right here, and it's going to say, after editing, choose File, Save to commit the changes. All right, let's hit OK. And it's going to bring this. Now, this is basically just our billboard. So if I were to just draw over there like that on my billboard and hit Command S, it automatically updates in my image, which is amazing. I'll draw a couple more, hit Command S. There we go. And it's updating automatically in my image. Not only that, but it's in perspective as well. So for instance, if I wanted to put a logo on there, well, it just so happens that I have a logo. There we go. This is the beautiful logo for the Chicago Candle Factory, which is something I'm super, really proud of. Um, I actually started a candle company. I'm going to tell you guys all about it in the coming years. But the Chicago Candle Factory is up and running. This is our beautiful logo designed by my friend, Brendan Shanley. And um, we're going to go ahead and make it into an ad. 
So we have our Chicago Candle Factory logo here. I'm gonna pull it into my billboard. So this is the billboard, right? Let's go ahead and hit Command T. I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit. We don't need it to be that big. So we're gonna scale it down. There we go. So it actually fits inside of the billboard. There we go. And now, you know what? Let's say, let's zoom in here. Let's say I just wanted this to be centered. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command A to select everything. And then I'm gonna click on my Move tool and use my alignment options up here. So I'm gonna align this from the center this way and the center that way and deselect. Cool. Now, well, let's go ahead and make a lot of these other things smaller so we can actually see what we're doing. All right. Cool. So keep in mind, guys, this is the billboard. This is the billboard that I'm working on. So all I have to do is hit Command S to save it, and it automatically translates into the actual billboard. So if I move this over here and hit Command S, it automatically translates. Because what we're doing is we're updating the smart object, and the smart object is the billboard. So it's automatically being, like, actually, you know, changed in the image, which is so cool. All right, let's go ahead and finish up this billboard because I've got all these different pieces. We're gonna put them, put them all together. We're gonna put them all together. And we're gonna make it look real good. All right, guys. So now that we have our smart object in place and we can see that editing our smart object automatically updates in our image, let's go ahead and finish out this billboard and make it look super good. Okay, so here's our billboard again. Now, I went ahead and pre-created some of these assets. This is handmade in Chicago, 100% recycled bottles plus soy wax, which is true. So I've already made these things. Now I'm just kind of like plugging them in and seeing how they look together. So let's use my move tool. I'm gonna to shift click and drag from one document to another one. And we can see, whoa, that's way too big, right? So let's go ahead and hit Command T and we'll just go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. And now if we didn't have any beautiful pictures of our products, you could think, you know, yeah, maybe something like that would look pretty good, like as a billboard. <laughs> we have no evidence of our products, but that's <laughs> they are handmade in Chicago. So I'm gonna hit Command S to save that, and there we can see, that's what it actually looks like on the sign. Now, this is super helpful because you're able to see like, oh, this font might need to be a lot bigger or a lot smaller. It's very, very, it's hard to see how something on the computer translates into real life. So being able to do this, you know, for instance, I'm like, wow, that, that logo is much too big. I need more space around it, right? So I'm gonna hit Command T. We're just gonna shrink that logo down a little bit and hit Command S to save it. It's like, oh good, we have more breathing room now. All right, well let's go ahead and bring in a picture of our candles. This is actually one of our, uh, this is a five pack of our candles. So we're gonna bring these in. I'm gonna hit Shift, click and drag from one to another. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Command T to transform and we're gonna just make this nice and small. There we go. If you're interested in the Chicago Candle Factory, by the way, um, check us out. We have a website, see chicagocandlefactory.com, um, where you can see beautiful product photos taken by yours truly. All right, so let's say we just wanted our candles on there and our logo. Well, we can do that too. Let's just hit Command S, and now we can see what that would look like in the actual ad. All right, so we're in the middle of creating our ad, and this is actually how I would create an ad for something like this. Now I'm deciding, you know what, maybe I want a picture with less candles in it. Maybe it's too much candles for it. I want, I want to be able to see the words and things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and pull in a different picture. So we've got, this picture is the one we started with. Remember, this is our billboard there, right? I've got another beautiful picture of the Chicago Candle Factory candles. We're gonna go ahead and use our move tool and shift click and drag from one image over to another one. All right, now we're gonna hit Control or Command T to transform that and we're simply gonna scale this down. There we go, and bring this over to the right. Okay, now we've got our text back over top of here. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna bring my text and I'm gonna hit Command T to just go ahead and scale that down quite a bit, and we're gonna scale this logo down quite a bit as well. So we've got our logo, we've got handmade in Chicago, 100% recycled bottles made with soy wax. There we go. All of our bottles are completely recycled from local bars, which is a lot of fun. Um, okay, <laughs> it's a lot of fun in many ways. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and bring that up. And I really like this. I, I think this is looking really great. It looks professional. It looks like the people who made it kind of know what, they, what they're doing. 
And that's our billboard. Now let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna hit Controller Command S on this to save it. And there it is, popped into our billboard automatically. Well, let's go ahead and change some things around. Like let's, this handmade in Chicago and the logo, I like those quite a bit together. I think they look great. So let's just shift click the two of those and hit Command G to group those, okay? Now let's see what this looks like if I wanted that to be on the right side and I wanted my bottles to be on the left side. Well, there we go. Let's hit Command S and we've got a completely different look for our billboard. There we go. Switch it up a little bit. So maybe you're like, oh, there are telephone poles, <laughs> lamps there. We don't want it covering up our beautiful candles. Um, these are all things that can come into consideration. All right, let's go ahead and bring that back right over there. And that's, I think it's absolutely beautiful. There we go. Let's bring it a little bit more so we can read the soy wax. Very cool. All right, so we can see how actually working on this smart object, we're able to create our billboard and have it update in the photo in real time. And when you're done, just close it out and you're good to go. So there we go, guys. The Chicago Candle Factory, handmade in Chicago, 100% recycled bottles and soy wax, right here on a billboard in Chicago from a picture I took on my iPhone. Pretty dang cool. Cool. All right, guys, that's all there is to creating a billboard ad in Photoshop. Just follow these key steps for maximum success. The first thing to do is define the shape of your billboard. I just use a rectangular marquee to create a selection and fill that with white. Then I converted that to a smart object, which is going to allow me to actually edit whatever the contents inside the smart object are. After converting to a smart object, we transformed that rectangle into perspective and then used a layer mask to cut out the lamps, making it look like whatever we put on the smart object was actually in the photo. Next, it's time to edit the actual billboard. Just double click on that smart object and it'll open up and you can edit it just as it were a normal document. From here, all we need to do is pull in a logo with some text and a picture and hit save and it automatically displays it inside of our photograph. You can use this technique to design elements and see their final destination points at the exact same time. So now if you ever have a client who wants to see what their image is going to look like in actual space, you can do that for them in real time. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I had a ton of fun making it. If you like what we're doing today or just all the time and you want to check out more Flurn, just hit that subscribe button on your screen now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea or a question for today's episode, just leave us a comment right down below. You can clickety clack right there on your keyboard and say, oh my God, that was so awesome. Thank you for showing me this. Um, or whatever else you wanna say. All right guys, thanks so much. I'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone. I'll flirt. You're just gonna get flirned later whether you want to or not. That's basically how it's gonna go. And guys, I'm so excited about today's episode. It's gonna be so good. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to create a smart. All right, this is gonna be so fun. Do we wanna check the recording, Asa? I just used a marquee tool and grabbed cool. Blah, blah, blah. All right. First thing you're gonna first first you need to first you need next is time to Next it's time. All right, next it's time to, next it's time, next it's time. You can use this technique to design, to design elements. And lastly, for bonus points, head over to chicagocandlefactory.com where you can tell me what you think about my new candle company. That's just horrible. <laughs> All right, and for bonus points,